Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the 10 books that I read in the later half of August. August is over, so I thought I would talk about the 10 books that I read towards the end of the month. Um, if you want to know all the books that I read at the beginning of August, be sure to go check out my mid-month wrap-up. I'll link it down below for you to go check out. Um, and I feel like this wrap-up is going to be a little short, even though I did read 10 books, because I didn't necessarily love, I don't think, any of these. Like, some were fine, some were okay, but I didn't give a single five-star in here. I have a lot of 3.5s, like a lot. So let's, let's just get started. I just think I'm in a weird reading mood. I'm currently working on some things right now, and... Um, like with work and stuff and it's definitely affected my reading mood. I haven't been reading a bunch so I think that also plays into it and I guess I'm looking for something very specific to love but I don't know what it is. Um, so I think it's affecting how I'm rating and reading books because I feel like I was being like not overly critical but like if I like I was feeling mad about the things I was reading. So um, unfortunately, one of them was Surrender of a Siren by Tessa Dare. This is the second book in her Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy, which is one of her OG series. And this one is about our heroine who we met in book one. She was like a side character and she really wants an adventure. So she makes up this rumor that she ran away with some guy and she's going to elope with him when in actuality, she just basically buys her way onto a ship. It used to be a pirate ship, basically, I think. Um, but now it's trying to like make legitimate business now that the war that they're, they were in is over. She ends up falling in love with the guy who used to be the captain of the ship that's on there. I don't remember like anything except I didn't like really these two characters. And I don't get why they fell in love. Like sometimes I don't like romance books when you can't well, all the time. I don't like romance books when you can't really see why these two fell in love with each other. Like all of a sudden they are. And I'm like, but what did you like about the other person to make them fall, to make you fall in love with them? Like this hero in here, I didn't find like any redeeming qualities about him really. I was just like, I don't like you, dude. Why is this woman falling for you? Other than the fact that you look good. Like that's not a reason for me to be in love with somebody. So, um, <laughs> And I just didn't feel like the love between them. I felt the lust, not the love. So didn't fill my romance loving heart necessarily. Um, but it was fun. Like I love this ship setting. Like I love anything on a ship, like a pirate ship and stuff. Like I'm obsessed with that. Um, that part was super fun, but uh, overall 3.5 stars. It was fine, more of a three, honestly. Next I read Journey For Her by Tiffany Roberts. I saw Tiffany Roberts post a, I think, audio clip of the audiobook that I think just came out of this book and who is very good <laughs> oh the guy's voice so good so um I was like let's pick it up I didn't listen to the audio though because I'm a cheapskate and just read it on KU instead this book starts out with Willow our heroine being dumped by her horrible horrible boyfriend that night she ends up running into the hero of this book who is uh, Kian, who is a stunning man who wants to show her a good time for the night to kind of like get over her breakup. They have like the best time together that night and Willow sneaks out of the hotel room before he can wake up the next morning. What Willow doesn't know though is that uh, Kian is actually an incubus and like she hooked up with like what he looks like with his glamour on, like looks like a human. Um, he's actually a incubus and he feeds off of desire off of people. And he is left absolutely reeling after his night with Willow in the 400 years that he has been alive no human has like satiated, 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 I cannot say that word, has combated his hunger like Willow has just from that one night. And he's never been with a human and then been wanting more afterward. So he realizes like he can't feed off of anybody else after he's been with Willow. Like his body will not let him feed off of anyone else's desire. And he has no, like he doesn't want to. He's like, I just want to find Willow. Where is she? And his body's basically becoming a husk because he can't find her and feed off of her and feed off of her desire. But he has no idea how to find her. He doesn't know her last name. He doesn't know where she lives. Like he's just walking the streets looking for this purple haired girl. And so, yeah, it's a little complicated when he's like legit dying because he can't feed off of anyone else and he just wants Willow. So um, that's the beginning part of this book and I don't want to talk about any anything else because um, it could be a spoiler, but I really did enjoy Kian's character. He was so fun. He was absolutely 
like gobsmacked, obsessed with Willow. And it was so fun to read about. And also I found it so endearing that Willow was like, I wanna be with someone who loves me. And he was like, honestly, I don't know all that much about love. Like, I don't really, I've never been in love, but like, I'm willing to try for you. Cause uh, I think you might be worth it. <laughs> and I also just love the paranormal, like magical part of this book. However, it was a tad too long for me. I honestly feel like there were some scenes that could have just been taken out of the book that weren't necessary. Especially the villains of the story. Like I didn't see the point in them. Like I didn't feel like we needed those villains. For memorable quotes, ooh, I have two. This one is from Kian. He says, I could spend a hundred thousand years walking every realm and never find another soul as beautiful as yours. And then he also tells Willow, you will never cease to be the most important thing in my universe. Even after the last spark of my soul fizzles out and there's nothing left of me, you will be my everything. Mm -hmm. um, representation in here, plus size, Willow is plus size. So that's that representation. Trigger warnings, attempted SA on page, but not from the hero. For tropes, it's Faded Mates, a man who has a map on him. Um, hero falls first, it's Kindle Unlimited. Um, there's like a monster creature, no third act breakup. One night to more. Paranormal, um, you have a photographer character. Willow's a photographer. I really liked that. Like she was a boudoir photographer. That was fun. Um, piercings, Kian has quite a few in certain places. <laughs> um, touch her and die for sure vibes. Um, and a worshiping hero, I give this book four out of five stars. Next I have Take a Chance, which is a short little novella. And the cover just reeled me in. I think it's an absolutely stunning cover. Like the art is beautiful and it was only 71 pages and I needed a palette cleanser, I think at work one day. So um, I picked this one up. This is a very short and hot kind of second chance. Oh, the dog wants to say hi. <laughs> second chance <laughs> um, novella um, between Cyrus and Cass. They knew each other in high school, um, but they haven't really seen each other since but they're both on vacation, I believe in like Mexico together and not together. They bump into each other while they're both on their respective like Mexico trips. Cyrus is going for his, I think brother's like bachelor party. And um, Cass is there because she wanted to take a girl's trip with her best friend, but her best friend got the flu. So she ended up just going to Mexico alone and having like alone time by the pool and stuff. Sounds like an amazing time to me. And when they bump into each other, it's basically like time has never passed between the two of them. And they decide to have some fun for the next few days while they're both in Mexico together. If you want a hot little beach read, like this is definitely like a cute little novella that you could pick up. And personally, I just loved how smitten Cyrus was. He's very smitten with cats. Uh, tropes in this one, it's a beach read, black love romance. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a novella. It's a summer read and it is vacation set. I gave this novella four out of five stars. Next, I have an arc of Craving the Alien Vampire by um, Ro, I think it's Sin, Sign, Sign. I'm butchering that, I'm so sorry. Um, but the author reached out to me on Instagram and told me that she had a alien vampire novella coming out and asked me if I was interested. And I was like, yes, I love vampires. I love aliens, I love novellas sign me up. This was a really fun novella. Um, and the heroine basically gets saved at an alien auction by the hero. He buys her for $5 billion essentially, which is bizarre. <laughs> he does it, I think as like a job, like his business, like asks him to buy this woman. But um, little does he know, like when he buys her, like that's actually his faded I loved how hot this book was. I love the fact that he was like an alien vampire. I've never really seen that before. That was really fun. However, I do wish this book could be longer. Um, personally with novellas in me, novellas are perfect when I think I get everything I needed. I might want more, but it's overall a perfect novella. There are some novellas though that I'm like, there wasn't like enough needed. I felt like it was lacking and I wanted more. I wanted more specifically about like the characters and their backstory. I felt like it was a little bit lacking, but overall I thought it was a great little debut novella and a really fun concept. And I think this is like the first book or prequel to a series. Oh, it's the first book in a series. So I would definitely be interested in picking up the other ones. Um, but overall it's a great short little read. I gave it three stars. Next is Taken to Sassor, Sassor? <laughs> by Elizabeth Stevens. I buddy read this book with Tiff over at Tiff Talks Pages. I love Tiff. We have been buddy reading one book in this series a month. This is an alien sci-fi romance series that is just so fun and addictive. Like they read like fantasy books. They just take place on different planets, which is so cool. 
this one's really interesting. This is definitely my favorite read from like this video specifically, like the second half. Um, this one's about Niheyu and Mian. And they met when Nieyu was ravaging and raiding Mian's human village on this alien planet called Sasor. She is a human woman and he is a like, kind of like Naga creature-ish. I can't really talk about it or like describe it really. He can like shift into a Naga creature, like a snake creature. The attraction between the two of them is like immediate, but there is a language barrier between the two. And there is also another problem with Naheyu as like kind of like the leader of his clan of alien creatures, right? Um, and he had a plan of marrying another clan's like daughter in order to raise their clan standings because they're kind of like the bottom of the barrel right now and he wants what's best for his people. So he's like, I'm just gonna marry one of those. But then he starts having this like amazing connection with Mian. This is a really addictive read. Audiobook, 10 out of 10, recommend, love it. Any books in the series, please listen to them. Um, this is the last audiobook that's currently out. So Tiff and I are gonna have to like physically read on KU the other books in the series because the audios are not out yet, which is tragic, but they do dual narration, which is really fun. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars simply because the hero kept pissing me off. He kept pissing me off. <laughs> I was like sick of him, honestly, like at some point. I was like, you just need to like say screw that and be with your woman. Like, I don't get that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, for tropes in here, um, you have an alien romance. It's dual narration. It's an audiobook, has faded mates in it. It's on Kindle Unlimited, there's a language barrier, a Naga creature, a possessive hero, a savior trope, and a shifter. Again, I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. I picked up another little novella. I picked up another Li Jiaquo book, and this one takes place during the 4th of July. Um, so a lot of Li Jiaquo's books take place like during holidays and has specific things involved with those holidays. So this book was about the 4th of July and its thing was a uh, fire play, I think. So this is the rival to lovers romance between Cameron and Arya. Arya is the sheriff of this small town and Cameron is the head like firefighter chief guy. They have been in like a betting war for years. They don't like each other, they're rivals. But then at the 4th of July celebration fundraiser that their competing businesses are in, things kind of like break and the dam explodes between the two of them. And they have a bet that may or may not end in each other's beds. So I'm gonna leave you with that because it is a short read, but for tropes for this one, Holiday, Hate to Love, um, it's a novella, it's small town, and it's on Kindle Limited. I gave this book 3.5 out of five stars. Next is one I'm actually disappointed in. Like, ugh, I think this is where my mood just went bleh. <laughs> um, this is A Life or a Lie by Helena Hunting. I really wanted to love this book. And I feel so bad. Like I want to love every book that I read from an author that I love. I love Helena Hunting's books. Like there are so many books I give five stars by Helena Hunting, but I'm realizing that she is one, unfortunately, of those hit or miss authors from me. I either love the book or I don't really like it. And I, I hate that because I love some of the books and I want to love all of them. But, uh, I didn't love this one. And it's sad because I'm seeing all my friends like this. Um, all I can tell you about this one is our heroine goes to Alaska and so does the hero. They end up meeting on the airplane to Alaska. She's going for like a researching thing on dolphins, I think. And then he is just going on a vacation. He was supposed to go on a fishing vacation with his brother, but his brother's wife is having complications with their baby that's being born. And so he just goes by himself. And um, they actually figure out that where they're like staying at is fairly close to each other. Thus starts their vacation hookup situationship. And that's all I can really tell you. That's only the beginning of this book. I will tell you there is a secret baby trope in here because that's what everyone else says. Um, and there is like kind of like second chance because of that secret baby trope. First of all, I'm not really that big of a fan of secret baby, but it, to be fair, she didn't know how to get a hold of this hero at all. And also I am not the biggest fan of lying, like lying, ugh, like I hate it. When the characters like lie to each other, I hate it. And both of them were keeping secrets from each other and I just didn't care. And I didn't care about this like I didn't care about them which is sad because like I wanted to read more books with like babies in them and there's a baby in this one and like I just didn't really care and there was this other guy in there that wanted to be with her and I was like why is this dude here and I also feel like the hero of this book like became a father like way too easily for me <laughs> like way too easily like this woman's been a mom for like a year 
you have not known you had a son and then you're able to like do all these things so easily. I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> I don't know. I just like didn't, I guess I didn't find it very believable in ways. So sorry to be a Debbie Downer, gosh darn Avery. Unfortunately, the next two, uh, like the next two are gonna be the same exact thing. So The Fey Warriors Princess by Jamie Schlosser, another three star read from me. It's actually a 2.5 star, but on Goodreads I rated it a three. I didn't care <laughs> about this book. Um, I wanted to because I think I just love the first book in this series so much and the other three, because this is the fourth book, have not been up to par in my opinion. And I also love the little novella that takes place like at the beginning of the series. Anyway, this one, before I read it, gave me like Jacob and Renesmee vibes because apparently the hero of this book is the um, like right hand warrior man to this fake king in a fantasy realm. And when he looks at that king's baby daughter in the eyes, like a year old, he realizes like that's his fated mate. So he runs away because like that's a baby, right? Even though he doesn't feel like those those feelings about a baby, no. He's just like, I'm gonna have to wait for so long to be with this fae like princess, like I have to leave. So he did and then she was like heartbroken because apparently as a baby, she could like, she knew that that was her fated mate. And like they get together within like the first like 10, 15 percent. And I'm like, the rest of this book is boring. Like, I love character driven stories, and there are some romances, like a lot of romances, where I'm able to just like sit and revel in, a, in characters being together. This one, I was so bored. I was so bored. And like, they're supposed to, I think like Jamie Schlosser tried to add like, like, like this fantasy war and these witches coming and trying to kill people. And I'm like, I don't care. I was literally skimming because I didn't care. <laughs> I just thought it was boring and I don't think I'm gonna be reading many more of Jamie Schlosser, which is sad because I loved the first book in this series so much. Um, but I've also tried a contemporary one by her and I didn't, I like DNF'd that one because it was about a girl who was under age and I was like, I'm good. So I think I'm done with this author. Please don't scream at me, but I also gave three stars to Off to the Races by Elsie Silver. I didn't, I didn't love this. I honestly, personally, find in romance books, when the first time the hero looks at our heroine, meets her for the first time, imagines like screwing her brains out. I find that icky. Like I find that very unattractive. <laughs> and um, that's not what I read romance books. That's not why. It's like an added bonus, you know what I mean? But that's not why I read romance books. And it just really turned me off. That like, it's like the first thing that this hero thinks about. And I'm just like, you gave me the big ick. And I don't think I can go back from that. <laughs> I just did not like him. I loved the horse racing and training part of this book. Oh, also I forgot to mention what this book was about. Um, but the heroine in here becomes the horse trainer to the hero's like horse farm or ranch or whatever, horse racing ranch. Um, and they don't really get off on the right foot at first, but then they fall for each other. I liked the horse part. I liked the heroine and her relationship with the horse that like nobody liked um, because the horse was kind of like a piece of work. But um, I liked that part of it. I didn't like the romance. Didn't like it. Just like anytime a hero, if I read about a hero like that, it's really hard for me to like be like, believe their romance and how he's falling in love with her because he was just imagining banging her out right from the moment that he sees her like an object. So uh, three stars, probably lower, so. And the last book that I have to mention is a book I'm actually currently reading, but I'm gonna finish it fairly soon. So I'm gonna add it as a part of this video. This is Queen of Song and Souls by C.L. Wilson. This is the fourth book in her Terror and Soul series. I can't really talk about this book all that much, um, but this is the fourth book in a fantasy romance series that I'm obsessed with, all about um, Elisetta Baristani and Rain Terran Soul and their epic fated mate romance and this giant war going on in this fantasy world. Like, if you want to read about epic fantasy romance love, like, look no further. The magic system is so interesting and the world just keeps getting more complex and complex and complex as you go along. Um, so it's very entertaining. I think I'm going to give this book four stars or maybe even 3.5 because it's definitely not my favorite in the series. I feel like it's very much setting up the last book, um, which is the next one I need to pick up because this is book four and there's five books in the series. So um, overall, this was a fine read. Like I'm, I'm reading it right now. I don't really see myself going below or above 3.5 or four stars. Anyways, there you have it. I know this video was a little bit of a Debbie Downer. 
sorry. Um, but I've also realized like I'm developing my taste more and I know what I want and all of these books just didn't have it. <laughs> Anyways, um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any flower emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.